But Donald Trump's other black friend, Kanye West, has gone far beyond Herschel Walker's humiliation into the full public exposure with Kanye West's vile, deep, and relentless hatred of Jewish people, and now public praise of Adolf Hitler. That's who Donald Trump was having dinner with in Florida last week. Today, Kanye West appeared with his white supremacist, anti-Semitic new best friend, Nick Fuentes, on Alex Jones' show, in which Alex Jones is supposed to play the part of the craziest person near the microphone. But not today. My people are evil Nazis, so... I mean, I, I, I disagree with both statements, but I get the yeah, Trojan. I don't, I don't like the word evil next to Nazis. I think we need to look at. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Just because you don't like one group doesn't mean the other. But look, I fine. love Jewish people, but I also love Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, I have to disagree with that. Right, but listen, we're going to go to break. I'm, 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 the, I'm the crazy one here. This is the day when every apologist for Kanye West, everyone who blames his medication, everyone who blames Kanye West's claimed mental health issues, which have never actually been medically documented, this is the day those people are out of apologies for Kanye West. No more pleas for sympathy about mental health issues that have never been medically documented publicly by anyone. No medical records, no physicians, no one who's treated him have, has ever spoken publicly about these conditions. If you believe he has mental health conditions, you believe Kanye West. That's who has told you that he has mental health conditions. And these mental health conditions that he claims, under no circumstances, cause anti-Semitism. On October 19th, after Kanye West tweeted Death Con 3 on Jewish people, Ari Emanuel wrote an article for the Financial Times demanding that companies stop doing business with Kanye West. And they did. Kanye West quickly lost a reported billion dollars worth of business associations that enraged the already angry anti-Semite. And his rage has continued to build every day, particularly against Ari Emanuel personally. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler. How about that one? Ari Emanuel, how you like that one? Hey, Ron, you gonna do anything to fix Chicago? Ari Emanuel is the head of Endeavor, a show business conglomerate he built after starting the Endeavor agency and merging with, with the old William Morris agency to create WME. And full disclosure, I have known Ari Emanuel for many years and he is my agent and I have never been prouder to say that than tonight. Because on October 19th, Ari Emanuel took a moral stance against the anti-Semitic poison Kanye West was spreading. And he knew that Kanye West would come after him and he would come after his brother, Rahm Emanuel, who used to be mayor of Chicago and served as President Obama's White House Chief of Staff. And in fact, Ari Emanuel's wife today was subject to attack on the Alex Jones show. And when no one else would do it, it was Ari Emanuel who took the public stance and wrote the manifesto against Kanye West that has put enormous pressure on Kanye West every day since October 19th. And that pressure has now revealed exactly who Kanye West really is. Kanye West is the worst person Donald Trump has ever had at his dinner table. He is far worse than Nick Fuentes, the little kid who he brought to do Kanye West brought to dinner with Donald Trump because no one knew who that kid was outside of the most deranged white supremacists and anti-Semites in America. But the world knows who Kanye West is, and Kanye West has become the world's most famous, the world's loudest, and the world's most hateful purveyor of Hitlerian anti-Semitism, and he has become a Hitler propagandist in the process. Kanye West claimed to Alex Jones today that among other great things that Adolf Hitler did were the invention of highways and the invention of the microphone. Adolf Hitler invented nothing. And today, Kanye West did what every Hitler lover does. He insisted, insisted that Hitler did not execute six million Jews in death camps during World War II. After covering up Kanye West's vicious anti-Semitism by editing it out of the interview that he did with Tucker Carlson, here is how Kanye West's fans at Fox see him. 
was blown away by Kanye West. I really was. We've rarely heard a man speak so honestly and so movingly about what he believes. Kanye West uh, is, is, is wise, yeah. uh, he's, he's unique, and uh, certainly he's fearless. Joining us now is Peter Barnard, professor of journalism and political science at the City University of New York. He's an MSNBC political analyst. Uh, Peter, we now have a world leader of anti-Semitism in the person of Kanye West. Yes, and you know, it was hard to know whether to laugh or cry during that conversation with Alex Jones, because Alex Jones, I mean, Alex Jones was nervous about what Kanye West was saying. And he actually said to Kanye West, you know, you're not really a Nazi, right? And Kanye West kind of said, essentially, I'm paraphrasing, yeah, I kind of do like Nazis, right? Even Alex Jones didn't know what to do with it because the level of anti-Semitism, which was already very blatant, literally now has moved from garden variety anti-Semitism to essentially apologies for the Nazi regime. Peter, how should we be handling it in journalism? Because it is a contagion. And I, there's so much of that Alex Jones stuff that I simply don't want to show. I just don't want uh, those statements going out on television. And there's millions of people out there who, who aren't exactly the target audience of this show, but could still hear it from this show. Right. And, the, and the, the truth is that Kanye West has a very big megaphone of his own. So it's hard to, to kind of shut him down. But I want to go back to something you said earlier, which is really, really important, which is <laughs> beyond his own megaphone, he was been he's been given a megaphone by the Trump era Republican Party. Tucker Carlson had him on his show, then edited out the most extreme anti-Semitic things that Kanye West said, because Tucker Carlson wants Kanye West out there because he likes the idea of having a famous black celebrity who essentially echoes white nationalist comments. So the Republican Party has, Donald Trump, as we said, had dinner with him after his blatantly anti-Semitic comments. The Republican Party has been trying to prop Kanye West up because they like having him echoing their white nationalist talking points, except that now he's getting, he's getting too extreme for even them. Uh, as we go forward, is there a point where where we should turn away from Ta Kanye West because we've made our point uh, about how poison this is. And at some point, are we just letting him use our microphones? Um, I mean, it's a very difficult decision. In some ways, it echoes some of the decisions that have always been faced there with Donald Trump. I mean, I think the problem is that even if you ignore Kanye West, a lot of other people are still going to see what he's saying. And so I think the challenge is not to indulge excessively in what he says, but to continue to make the point that this is unacceptable. Because what we have clearly seen in the Trump era Republican Party is they will try to move the goalposts of bigotry and to make more and more and more unacceptable unless people firmly resist. Kevin McCarthy apparently discovered today and only today uh, that Kanye West is anti-Semitic. Uh, and so we now, I think, know what it takes. I think the Republican Party uh, has shown us their line. And their line seems to be, you have to publicly praise Adolf Hitler. Anything short of public praise of Adolf Hitler, and you're welcome at Donald Trump's dinner table or Kevin McCarthy's dinner table. Right, that's exactly right. Anti-Semitism is not disqualifying, only genocidal anti-Semitism. That's where the bar is for today. The House uh, Judiciary Committee's website, I mean, Twitter feed, had a praise of Kanye West up until today. Day for the DEFCON against the Jews, that wasn't enough for them. So that shows you, again, how unbelievably low the bar for bigotry is in today's Republican Party. 